You've probably heard the term toxic relationships so many times on social media that it's lost its meaning. Everyone is talking about red flags, including me, love bombing, and narcissists. But what if I told you that there's actually brain chemistry behind why you keep choosing the wrong person? And what if the reason that you can't seem to leave that chaotic relationship or stop being attracted to people who are bad for you isn't about weakness or poor judgment, but how your brain is wired? I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos to help you strengthen your mind, fortify your brain, and build resilience. Today, we're going to understand the dopamine mechanism that makes unavailable or harmful partners so compelling. And this isn't relationship advice. This is neuroscience. And understanding it might be the first step toward breaking the pattern that you've been stuck in for years. Many people think of dopamine as the happiness chemical or pleasure chemical. You've probably heard the saying, oh, that gave me a dopamine hit, like it's the feeling of enjoying something. But that's actually not quite right. Dopamine is about anticipation, motivation, and reward seeking. It's not the endpoint satisfaction of getting what you want. It's the drive to pursue what you want. And that difference matters hugely for understanding toxic attraction. Here's how it works. Dopamine spikes highest when a reward is uncertain but possible. Once you actually get the reward, dopamine drops. And this is why the will they text back creates more dopamine than they always text back. Your brain is wired to pay attention to unpredictability because evolutionarily unpredictable rewards required more effort from you. Think of it like a slot machine. Dopamine isn't the feeling of winning at the slot machine. It's what makes you pull the lever over and over again, hoping to win. It thrives on unpredictability. And that's exactly what your brain is doing in a toxic relationship. It's gambling. Every time you check your phone, wonder if they'll show up or which version of them that you're going to see today, your brain is pulling that lever. So here's the toxic relationship connection. Unavailable or inconsistent partners create maximum uncertainty. Your brain treats this like a slot machine with intermittent reinforcement. Hot, cold behaviors, unpredictability, mixed signals, all of this creates a dopamine jackpot. Meanwhile, healthy, stable relationships provide predictable rewards, which means lower dopamine spikes and boredom for some people, but those stable relationships trigger something else oxytocin and serotonin. And these are the chemicals that build long-term bonding, trust, and contentment. The problem is your brain is confusing high dopamine with right person. It's mistaking the intensity or craving for depth of connection. But it gets more complicated because this isn't just about one chemical. It's about how your brain learns patterns. Your brain is consistently trying to predict what will happen next so it can respond in the best way possible. Dopamine helps your brain update these predictions. When things turn out better than expected, dopamine rises. And your brain encourages you to remember what led to that result. When things are worse than expected, dopamine drops, signaling it's time to be cautious or change course. If outcomes are unpredictable, dopamine activity often stays elevated, keeping you engaged and on alert as your brain tries to learn from the uncertainty. And this process is called reward prediction error, and it's a big part of why unpredictable situations can feel so compelling or addicting. But your brain isn't addicted to the person, it's addicted to the unpredictable pattern. Let's break down three patterns of unstable relationships that pull us into this dopamine trap. Pattern one is intermittent reinforcement. Sometimes they're amazing. You get a dopamine surge. Sometimes they're cold or absent. The dopamine crash creates this intense craving. And this variability up and down is more addictive than consistent behavior. It's why the partner who disappears and then love bombs you is so hard to leave. Your brain learns, if I just wait, if I just try harder, or the good version comes back, and every time that prediction is correct, the pattern gets reinforced. Pattern two is the near miss effect. It's that feeling of, we almost had a great weekend, or this conversation was almost what I needed. Near wins activate dopamine more than actual wins. Your brain interprets this as, 
I'm this close to getting what I want. So it keeps you hooked on potential rather than reality. You're not in love with who they are. You're in love with who they almost were last Tuesday. Pattern three is investment escalation. The more you invest, time, energy, emotional vulnerability, the more your brain wants to justify that investment. Your dopamine system says, you've put in this much, the payoff must be coming. And this is why it's often so hard to leave the longer you stay. You're experiencing the neurological version of sunk cost fallacy. Your brain doesn't want to accept that all that effort might not pay off. Now here's something important to understand. If chaos felt like love in your early life, your brain learned to associate unpredictability with connection. Maybe your caregivers were inconsistent. Maybe affection was conditional or hard to predict. And this isn't a character flaw, it's conditioning. Your reward system was calibrated to expect drama as normal. And that calibration is still running in the background, influencing who feels exciting and who feels boring. There's also something called the tolerance effect. Over time, you need more inconsistency and more drama to get the same dopamine hit. Healthy stability starts feeling boring because your system has been conditioned to expect chaos. And this is just neurological adaptation. It's not that you don't want a healthy relationship. It's that your brain doesn't register it as rewarding anymore. Now, understanding the mechanism is one thing. Recognizing when you're in this trap is another. So let me walk you through five signs that you're caught in the dopamine trap. And no judgment here. These are neurological patterns, not personal failures. Awareness is the first step to changing the pattern. So sign one, the chase is better than the catch. The pursuit, the texting, the wondering, the hoping feels more intense than actual time together. The fantasy of who they could be is more compelling than who they actually are. Sign two, you rationalize red flags as complexity or depth. You can tell yourself they're emotionally unavailable because they've been hurt or the hot and cold behavior means that they're just struggling with their feelings and you spend more time analyzing their behavior than experiencing connection. Sign three, stable people feel boring and too easy. When someone is consistent and available, you lose interest. You interpret lack of drama as lack of chemistry. You might even create problems or push them away to generate intensity. Sign four, you feel anxious when things are going well. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Good moments feel temporary or untrustworthy. You might even sabotage things to return to that familiar chaos. In sign five, the relationship takes up a disproportionate amount of mental space. You can't stop thinking about it, analyzing it, or replaying conversations. If you recognize yourself in these patterns, it doesn't mean that you're doomed. It means that your brain has learned a pattern and patterns can be unlearned. You can't break free by just flipping a switch or willing yourself to do so. You have to retrain your brain's reward system and that takes time. So you have to be patient with the process, but here are some steps that can help. Step one, name what's happening in real time. When you feel that dopamine surge, that excitement from the breadcrumb text or the hope, that small gesture that they give you, pause literally say out loud or in your head, this is dopamine, not connection. This creates space between the chemical response and your behavioral choice. You're engaging your prefrontal cortex, which is your rational brain, alongside your reward system. Step two, track the pattern, not the person. Start journaling. When do you feel most attracted? Is it after distance or conflict, when they're unavailable? And notice what happens to your interest when they're consistently available. You're gathering evidence that your attraction is pattern-based and not person-specific. And this can help you see the mechanism rather than blaming yourself for choosing wrong. You didn't choose wrong. Your brain is responding to a specific type of stimulation. Step three, redirect your dopamine system to healthier choices. Your brain needs novelty and unpredictability, but it doesn't have to come from relationships. Engage in activities that provide steady, healthy dopamine, like learning new skills, creative projects, physical challenges, 
exploring new places. These activities are not serving as distraction. They're retraining your reward system to find excitement and growth rather than chaos. You're teaching your brain that dopamine can come from sources that don't hurt you. Step four, expect the withdrawal phase. If you leave or go no contact, your brain will push back. A dopamine drop equals cravings, obsessive thoughts, and romanticizing the relationship. And this is neurological withdrawal. It's not proof that you made a mistake. It's proof that the pattern was deeply wired. Knowing this in advance can help you weather it. When you're lying in bed at three in the morning, convinced that you should text them, you can tell yourself, this is withdrawal and this will pass. And the last step five, gradually expose yourself to stability. If stable people feel boring, that's your dopamine system talking. Start with small exposures. Can you tolerate coffee with someone who's generous with compliments instead of criticism? Can you go on a second date with someone who's excited to be in your presence? Here, you're retraining your reward system to recognize that oxytocin-driven bonding, like trust and safety and consistency, these things are valuable, even if it doesn't create the same dramatic spikes. Over time, like weeks to months, your brain will recalibrate and stability will start feeling safe and fulfilling instead of dull. The most important takeaway here is this. The intense pull of a toxic relationship isn't a personal failure. It's your brain's reward system being controlled by a powerful pattern of unpredictability. Your brain can learn new patterns. Understanding the mechanism removes the shame and self-blame. Every time you recognize the trap, you're weakening its hold. By naming it, tracking it, and practicing new patterns, you can rewire your brain to value stability. And when you do, you give yourself a chance to experience love that isn't exhausting, but instead is nourishing. So the next time you find yourself craving someone who keeps you guessing, pause and ask, is this connection or is this my brain chasing a dopamine hit? That awareness alone is the beginning of change. If you found this topic helpful, this is just the beginning. I'll be diving much deeper into the science of love and connection in a new series starting after the holidays. So if you want to learn more about how your brain shapes attraction and connection, make sure you've subscribed and don't miss it. Thanks for watching today. See you next time.